This video shows how to make a leather sheath for a fillet knife, including an 8-string braided edge. This pattern is one piece folded along the spine with a flat gusset on the inside to protect the edge of the knife from cutting through the stitching seam. The design also has a strip of wear leather along the top to add strength, a fancy pull tab strap closure sewn in place around the curve so the knife is locked in tightly, and 3 16 inch holes evenly spaced 3 8 of an inch apart to make it easier to lace a very strong and decorative edge with 3 16 inch lace. I use AutoCAD to draw 1 to 1 scale, then print the pattern in an eighth of an inch acrylic for sturdy cutout templates, marking gauges, and glue up jigs. An easy way to cut out the leather pieces is to clamp the acrylic pattern onto 3 to 4 ounce vegetable tan saddle leather and drag a hobby knife along the edge to make the parts. Glue in a flat gusset to one side so the blade of the knife can be tightly fitted without cutting into the stitching as the knife is pulled in and out of the sheath. When the glue is dry, scribe your stitching seams an eighth of an inch from the edges with dividers. Then use stitching chisels to punch the stitching holes, but only mark and punch your stitching holes on the side of the gusset because the other side will be punched through after glue up. Then bevel the exposed edges and color the leather. The best way to evenly spread leather dye is with an airbrush, but a sponge works great too. The eco-friendly solvent dyes used here are charcoal black for the body and range tan for the trim and pull tab. Skiving down the edges removes excess bulk, which helps to create a sunken seam with a more refined rounded shape after the sheath is stitched together. The details make a big difference, so adding a pigskin lining to the inside of the pull tab refines and amplifies the luxury of a hand-sewn knife sheath. Glue the lining in place around a small dowel to apply even pressure and trim off the excess after the glue is dry. Another detail is to finish the edges before the pieces are sewn together. Burnishing the edges with a little gum tragicanth makes the edges smooth and easier to apply edge paint to. The acrylic patterns can be used in several different ways to accurately guide the parts into place. Installing a keeper for the pull tab to fit into is easier when it is sewn flat. When one side is attached, the other side of the keeper can be marked and stitched into place. Stitching a lining under the keeper limits how much the leather can stretch for a tight fit. When it is time to glue and stitch on the bottom of the strap assembly, leave the strap itself to be glued and stitched into place around a curved handle after the body is assembled to ensure the most accurate fit. A simple wooden dowel works great as a tool to shape the leather around, and acrylic glue-up jigs help to line up the seams where they are supposed to be. Adding a 1 inch strip of wear leather along the top adds a decorative touch and makes it easier to pull the knife in and out of the sheath after it is stitched into place. Adding an acrylic top coat to the interior of the sheath helps to protect against moisture and an acrylic glue up jig works great to distribute the glue with even pressure to create a flat seam as the glue dries. A stitching pony is like an extra set of hands and I use them as often as I can because it allows me to use both hands to stitch faster and tension the thread better, which also means there is less chance of snagging a crossing thread as the needles are passed through the holes. After the body of the sheath is stitched together, the pull tab latch can be glued into place around the curve of the knife handle. When the glue dries, the leather is in its new shape and needs to be stitched into place. A little extra patience and a very sharp awl is required, but stitching around a curve is not hard. When the stitching is done, the remaining leather can be trimmed so the edges can be finished before lacing. It is easier to lace an 8 string round edge braid with instructions on how to do it. I found this pattern on page 301 of Bruce Grant's book, Encyclopedia of Rawhide and Leather Braiding, and if you want to get into braiding leather, I highly recommend it. Edge braiding is not as easy as it looks and takes lots of practice, so you want to make sure the lace fits the holes with no obstructions for the lace or needle to get hung up on. I have used lots of thonging chisels in the past, which are little slits, but round holes are easier to lace, especially if you are new to lacing. Punch the holes the same width as the lace so they lie flat and are large enough for more than one leather thong to pass through them. Before you start braiding, you will need to measure and prepare your lace. You want at least seven times the length of lace for the distance you want to braid. You also want a very strong lace with no imperfections or cracks that will weaken the lace and break as you are weaving the lace with tension. Kangaroo lace is used by whip makers and is very strong for being very thin and easy to work with. The lace thickness used here is 3 16th of an inch and the color is saddle tan. 
Cut a point onto both ends of the lace and attach the needles. I like to use the threaded brass style lacing needles when I am working with kangaroo lace because they are easy to pass through the holes. This braided edge has 23 holes for the lace to tension through each hole twice and the end holes three times so leather conditioner is very important to keep the leather and lace from cracking as tension is applied. I like to wear gloves and rub generous amounts of conditioner around the stitching holes and all over the lace. A good way to condition the lace is to run the lace between a paper towel covered in conditioner. Decide which side is the front and start pulling the lace through the back of hole number one. Clip the end of the thong to the edge of hole number one to start creating tension and wrap the lace around the edge through the back of hole number five. Then pass the needle under the first thong and through the back of hole number two. The next pass is through the back of hole number six and weaved under, over and through the back of hole number three. Followed by under, over, under through the back of hole number seven and under, over, under to get ready for the next hole. This 8 string pattern continues under, over, under, over or the same pattern as a 4 strand braid with an extra weave on both sides. So each pass is done the same way before the pass is to finish the ends. This weaving method uses one thong with the end of the thong being weaved back in the opposite direction to finish off the pattern at the beginning. So once the pattern is established, the end of the lace can be weaved into place and tensioned in a tight braid moving forward. The back lacing will pass the thong through hole number one three times and to finish the back braiding follow the pattern and open a hole with a fid for the needle to pass underneath at least two intersection points. You can cut the end off but I like to leave the end on for another five or six passes in case I need to tension the lace a little bit more. After the first seven holes are weaved you can continue with the pattern moving forward which will be through the back of hole number eight and under over under through the back of hole number four. Then under over under continuing until you reach the end. The lace is weaved and passed through the last hole three times and to finish the braid it is pulled tight under at least two intersection points to hold the lace in place so the end can be cut off. This 8 string braided leather knife sheath took me about 8 hours to complete, not including the drying time. An hour to draw and cut out the acrylic patterns, an hour to cut and punch the holes and seams and add color, an hour to finish the edges, about 3 hours of stitching including 2 hours for the pull tab latch assembly and about an hour to lace the 8 string round edge braid. 